This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the Galaxy S10 launch right around the corner, I think it's a good idea to prepare for what we're about to see. I'm super pumped. Thumbs up if you guys are pumped too. The Note 9 was just an amazing phone and I'm really, really looking forward to the S10. So I went online and I looked at all the rumors and the leaks and I combined them all and that's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we do that, I gotta give a quick shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. A premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your new year goals. Whatever you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. Me personally, I've been really diving into DaVinci Resolve. I love color grading, I love special effects, and even though I've been using DaVinci Resolve for a while, I don't really know too much about Fusion and it kind of confuses me. So I've been learning more about compositing and doing special effects within DaVinci Resolve 15 because it's just, it's really awesome software. Skillshare is also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. 10 bucks a month. I mean, come on people, 10 bucks a month is not that much. How much do you spend at Starbucks every single month? You can join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. What we're gonna do is for the first 500 people that use the link in the description of this video to sign up for Skillshare, you're gonna be given two month free access to their premium membership to get your learning game on and expand your mind. So do it, just do it. Learn something, learn something new, take in as much as you can, just do it. Okay, so what's the deal with the Galaxy S10 and how many models are they going to be announcing? Now, rumors suggest that there's five possible models, but I really wouldn't include the fifth model as an announcement because I don't think it's gonna happen. And that's the Galaxy X or the foldable Galaxy device. I think that's gonna come way later in the year, so we're really not gonna talk about that. But the other four models are the Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S10 Plus, the Galaxy S10 Lite, and the Galaxy S10 X or the Galaxy S10 5G. All of the information that I gathered for this video can be found at the links in the description of this video because I gotta give credit where credit is due. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the similarities of every model and then we're gonna discuss the models in detail to find out the differences between each one. So let's go ahead and do this. Right off the jump, we're looking at the Snapdragon 855 and the Exynos 9820. These are seven nanometer processors. They're gonna make huge improvements to mobile and I'm really looking forward to this. Now the Snapdragon 855 is gonna bring a ton of capabilities to the mobile market as the Exynos 9820 is also going to do the same thing. Now, one of the key features that I love about the 9820 is the possibility of 4K 120 frames per second. I'm not saying they're gonna do that with the S10, but the fact that it does support that is pretty cool. The next thing is UFS 3.0 memory, which is going to double transfer speeds and improve efficiency. This really hasn't been confirmed and a lot of people are suggesting it's not going to happen. The same thing with the DDR5 RAM, but Samsung is the one manufacturing the UFS 3.0 memory, so I could see that happening. Then we have the Infinity O display with slimmer bezels. Now we've already seen the Infinity O display on the Honor View 20. It looks pretty good. Definitely gonna take some getting used to. The biggest difference from the renders that I have seen is instead of the hole punch notch being on the left side, it's going to be on the right side with the Galaxy S10. We'll have to see though. Plus it does look a little bit smaller. My biggest thing is the slimmer bezels. The slimmer bezels are gonna be awesome. So then we have the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor for the S10, S10 Plus and the S10X or 5G only. The S10 Lite will not get this. The ultrasonic fingerprint scanner is going to be an in-display fingerprint scanner that Samsung has worked and partnered with Qualcomm to produce. So this is really, really exciting. Can't wait to try that. Then we have a headphone jack on all the models. So happy to see Samsung is not killing this off. This is pretty much 100% certain. I know that it's coming though. Next year, Samsung probably will get rid of the headphone jack. They're going to do it eventually, but it's really nice to see them holding out as long as they can. So the next thing is the possibility of an in-display or under-display ear speaker, which I highly doubt. In other words, in order to make the phone as bezel-less as possible, they're going to completely hide the earpiece, you know, the part at the top of the phone, and put it behind the display and pretty much use like vibrations in order to 
push the sound to your ear. Similar technology to what Jawbone has been using for years with their Bluetooth earpieces. Sounds awesome, don't think it's gonna happen, but it might. Unfortunately, there's gonna be no faster charging speeds with the S10 models. That's kind of a bummer. Next up for another design change, it looks like according to the renders and leaks that Samsung has placed the power button further apart from the Bixby button in order to avoid accidental presses, which I'm definitely feeling that. I just wish they would get rid of the Bixby button altogether. I don't really use Bixby. I know it does have its purposes and a lot of people do use it. I just wish that it wasn't there or able to be remapped completely, but you know, that's probably not gonna happen. Then we have Samsung's own Face ID. This is gonna be huge. I have no idea how they're gonna do it yet, especially with like a single hole punch notch with one camera, but supposedly they have the tech to make their own Face ID competitor to give you full facial recognition and I don't know how, how it's gonna work, to be honest. Uh, we also have a new interface. So this one's kind of been out for a while in terms of beta on the Note 9, and that's the Samsung One UI interface. I haven't messed with it, but supposedly it's a lot cleaner, and it's going to add like the same experience all across the board. So whether you're using their smart home devices or you know Tizen on their Galaxy Watch, everything is gonna be seamless, and it's going to be like the same experience, hence the name One UI, so kind of cool. Now to go along with additional software enhancements, we're looking at the next generation of Bixby, but it's probably not gonna be that much different from the Note 9. We have the addition of Bright Night Mode, which is a camera mode that is going to pretty much compete with Google's Night Sight. Really excited to see that. We have Stage Lighting, which is going to be kind of like a portrait lighting competitor from the iPhone. Again, pretty exciting to see. We have the possibility of portrait mode for video in real time, thanks to that Snapdragon 855. Like I said, the Snapdragon 855 is able to bring a lot of capabilities to the mobile market, and that's one of them. That is pretty, pretty damn cool, I gotta say. We also have further improvements to the variable aperture. Don't have anything in detail yet, but that could be, could be huge because even though it works fine on the Note 9 and the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, I think that it overexposes a little bit too much, so they definitely could enhance it. And of course, to go along with that, you're gonna get camera processing improvements. They do that every single year. They may not change the actual optics, but they definitely improve the camera processing. This year, I'm sure it will get a new sensor, and also the processing will be finally tweaked to give you better results. So now let's go ahead and talk about the differences of each model starting with the Galaxy S10. So the Galaxy S10 is gonna have a 6.11 inch display, which is 5% larger than the S9, and that's thanks to the shrunken bezels. It's gonna have four cameras. We're gonna have three cameras on the back and one camera on the front, and that consists of a standard wide angle and telephoto camera on the back side. We're looking at a 3,500 milliamp hour battery with reverse wireless charging. Again, this isn't in stone, but because Huawei did it, I could definitely see Samsung doing that, and a lot of the rumors do suggest that reverse wireless charging is coming to the S10 lineup. We have six gigs of RAM, not bad, and 128 to 256 gigs of storage. Again, I could definitely see that, not bad at all. It's supposed to be available in black, white, blue, and green, with a starting price of around 780 bucks. Ooh, phones are getting really expensive. So for the S10 Plus, we're looking at a 6.44 inch display, which is 4% larger versus the Galaxy S9 Plus. We have five cameras total. We have three rear cameras and two front facing cameras. It's pretty much the same as the S10 in terms of the rear camera layout, but the difference is you do get a wide angle on the front side, totally in for that. And uh, yeah, that's definitely gonna add to the experience. Then you get a 4,000 milliamp hour battery with of course reverse wireless charging. Loving the battery size. Definitely feeling that. Six to eight gigs of RAM. I'm assuming it depends on the model that you get in terms of storage. Uh, the storage options are 128, 256, and 512 gigs of storage, plus the micro SD card support uh, on all models. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, it's gonna be available in black, white, blue, and green with a starting price of 870 bucks. Oof. Okay, so moving on to the Galaxy S10 Lite or Galaxy S10e. 
it's pretty much made to compete directly with the iPhone XR. We're looking at the Snapdragon 855, so it's gonna have the same processor as all the higher end models, really awesome. It's got a flat 5.8 inch display. So instead of the curved edges, it's gonna be straight flat. Not a bad thing. I, for one, am totally cool with that. And at times I wish they would just have a flat display across all of their models. It's gonna have four gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, pretty nice. A 3100 milliamp hour battery, Ooh, we're going to see how good that actually does. Three cameras, two on the back, one on the front, a side fingerprint reader rather than an in-display fingerprint reader. Totally cool with that as long as it works good and it's not like in a very obtrusive, weird position. That's going to be available in black, white, green, blue, and yellow. The addition of the yellow seems kind of weird, but given the fact that this is made to compete with the iPhone XR, it does make sense to have more color options for this particular model and a starting price of around 670 bucks, give or take a few dollars, which for budget, that just, oof. Finally, for the big one, for the Mac Daddy, the Galaxy S10 Plus 5G or Galaxy S10 X, which is going to be their special edition, which definitely has a special edition price. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's gonna have a 6.7 inch display, which is awesome, but I feel like it might be a little bit too big. We'll have to see. Six cameras, awesome. That is amazing. And that's gonna consist of four rear and two on the front. So you're gonna have a standard telephoto wide and one just dedicated to depth sensing. I'm not sure how that's gonna play out, but I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm willing to test that. And here's the cool thing. This is the thing that really caught my eye the most, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Kind of doubtful, but if they do that, that is game changing. And of course, it's gonna have reverse wireless charging. We're looking at 10 to 12 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, a ceramic back versus a glass back. Very interesting to see. And it's gonna be available in white or black with a starting price. Now, hold on, you might wanna go get a diaper because you might yourself. With a starting price of around $1,600. Wow, whoa, but I still want it. So that's what I've gathered about the S10 in all of the models that are expected to be released on February 20th. I'm gonna be at the event. If you're gonna be at the event, make sure you find me, say what's up, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're attending. I'm really pumped about this phone, super excited. I love the direction Samsung has been moving with the Galaxy lineup, although I don't know if introducing more models is the best way to go too many options can confuse people and that could drive sales down but what do you guys think what model really catches your eye the most um what, what are you hoping for like i want to know let's start a conversation down below in the comment section if you guys have any questions about what i just talked about or anything else leave it down below in the comment section and i'm going to start reading off your questions at the end of every video to you know, give you guys some feedback and really engage with you. One thing I forgot to mention about the Galaxy S10 X or the S10 5G is a lot of rumors are saying that it's going to be a Verizon exclusive, which I hope they don't do that. Verizon does have great service and I guess the partnership kind of makes sense. I'm on T-Mobile and I don't feel like paying those Verizon prices. So um, hopefully that doesn't happen. That would, that would really, that would really hurt. It would. It would destroy something in this area a little bit and uh, not feeling that. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more news like content like this, make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like it. Again, comments down below if you want them read in the next video. And uh, yeah, huge shout out to Skillshare for making this possible. Click on that link to get your learning game on and I will talk to you guys in the next one.